And there are numerous, uh, as I mentioned, receptors involved. There are G-coupled protein receptors that are involved in itch. Uh, there are cytokines that I'll discuss very briefly. And there are also opioids. You remember that uh, mu opioids, morphine, is an excellent treatment for chronic pain, but, or acute pain too, but uh, one of the side effects is itch. And my colleagues more than a decade ago in Japan found that in patients with chronic itch, there's an imbalance between mu receptor activity over expression of mu versus kappa receptor activity. This was found in uh, patients with uremic pruritus. Um, and later on, it led to new treatments that I'll discuss. Now, in terms of cytokines, we know of uh, several cytokines that are more itch specific. The ones that you'll see this year, hopefully, or next year beginning is a drug that will target atopic eczema and will be opening the field dramatically is the dupalimumab, which targets IL-4 and IL-13. Uh, but another itchy cytokine that we had the particular interest is interleukin-31. This is a cytokine that has been well expressed in atopic eczema, as well as there are other cytokines that you already have in use in uh, psoriasis, like interleukin-17A, which has a significant antipyritic effect, um, the antibody. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, interleukin-31 is a considered an itchy cytokine and has two receptor, oncostatine and IL-31 receptor. And uh, it has been uh, uh, ac um, active in, in atopic eczema itch. Um, and what uh, I would go through it a bit uh, fast because I think it's uh, we're limited in time, but um, one, one of the uh, itchy conditions uh, that uh, we've been uh, studying it is lichen amyloidosis. Lichen amyloidosis is a, a, a uh, variant of localized cutaneous amyloidosis. It's most prevalent in Southeast Asia. I, I practice in Singapore and would see every day patients like that, and they have extreme localized itch in these lesions. And there is an apoptosis of keratinocytes with amyloid uh, in the papillary dermis. And it's in some cases associated with atopic dermatitis. And what we've uh, uh, shown is that interestingly, the nerve fibers, we, we looked at these are staining of nerve fibers and the nerve fibers that transmit itch go up to the stratum granulosum. And what you can see here is in, in patient, you have uh, no innervation, almost uh, there's diminished innervation versus in healthy cell control. So, suggesting that there's some kind of damage to the nerves. And just recently, we've uh, published a study with my uh, fellow um, Ethian uh, from uh, Singapore on um, uh, furthermore testing, not just the biopsies, but looking at sensory testing and found that there's a significant uh, neuropathic, meaning damage to the nerves in these patients. They have increased warm detection, so they don't feel warm thresholds as in healthy subjects. And uh, furthermore, we looked at the cytokine interleukin-31. Now, interleukin-31 in um, a, re a mutation in oncostatin, which is the one of the receptors, is uh, has been shown in familial cases of lichen amyloidosis by uh, John McGrath's group. And we were interested to see if it is in patients who have uh, of, uh, disease without the familial cases. And indeed, there is significant um, a exp expression of uh, the interleukin-31 receptor in oncostatin in this case. So um, IL-31 is a itchy cytokine, not just in atopic eczema, but has a significant impact in the disease of lichen amyloidosis. And today we discussed about sarcoid, which is a really nice case, but this was a patient who was uh, referred to me with sarcoidosis. But I didn't buy that this is sarcoidosis, and we, um, several biopsies uh, showed actually he had granulomatous MF. And uh, CTCL is one of the most severe types of itch. I, this is one of the most challenging cases I have uh, in types of chronic itch. They're miserable patients, particularly uh, the patients who have erythrodermia, um, cesare or erythrodermic MF, 
Um, just have to mention another type that is extremely itchy is, I don't know if the residents know of the first year, this is folliculotropic MF. Sometimes it has acne form, it has acne form on the face. And uh, this is a slide that I got from John Goitart. Uh, but these are patients who are miserable. And uh, with collaboration with Alan Roque and uh, Juan Goitart, the world expert in CTCL, we looked at this cytokine, IL-31, in patients with CTCL who have itch versus no itch. And interestingly, we found that this cytokine is overexpressed in patients with significant itch. Um, and furthermore, uh, when the patients received a treatment with HDAC, uh, rimedipsin, there was a significant reduction of itch, and it corroborated well and correlated with the reduction of IL-31. So I think that we are now up to understanding that this cytokine has a significant role in itch of a uh, lymphoma um, of the skin. And I, I think that's one of the interesting things because there is now a, a drug that is targeting IL-31 receptor. Now this study, we looked at biopsies of skin. So what I showed you before was serum and uh, RNA um, uh, results, but this was uh, skin biopsies that we've evaluated of interleukin-31 and its receptor. And again, we showed that those who had, and we were blinded, so we received from Juan and Alan Rook biopsies, and we assessed the interleukin-31, and you could see that there's significant uh, uh, involvement of interleukin-31 in the skin and dermal epidermal junction, and in the receptor, which is only overexpressed in the skin, and particularly the interleukin-31 receptor, not in the dermis, um, is uh, significantly more expressed than in healthy subjects. So this is exciting to us because we think that there is here an explanation to a bothersome problem for our patients. So uh, we're continuing to look into these interaction of these Th2 cytokines to better understand how uh, chronic itch and lymphoma is uh, um, expressed and um, better understanding the me mechanisms. Um, one of the interesting work that uh, we, uh, is sometimes serendipity in medicine is um, more than six, seven years ago, uh, my colleagues at uh, Wake Forest, which had uh, the high, uh, largest primat center in the U.S., I think Emory has a bigger one, uh, but one of the largest, uh, called me and said that they have a monkey colony of uh, macaque uh, monkeys that were extremely itchy. They didn't know why. They didn't have mites. They didn't have eczema. We started following them up, and they said, we heard you're the itch expert. What do you do with it? And these were female macaques. They were, some of them were depressed. Um, it's not fun to be in these cages, I have to tell you. Uh, but um, we started following them, and then uh, we have, uh, they were sacrificed at one time, and we have now a collection of, uh, uh, with due respect to mice models, and um, it, there's a big difference between mice and primates, and I, I think that um, this is the, actually the first uh, follow-up of chronic itch in, in a model that mimics more in human beings. So we have a lot of information gathered. Um, I won't to today discuss that because we need to publish it yet, but just to let you know, there are a lot of uh, genes that are uh, overactivated. In itchy primate, we're talking about 2,000 genes, with what we call differentially expressed itchy genes versus uh, also we started looking at humans. So in atopic eczema and psoriasis, um, and uh, the bottom line is that we do also immunohistochemistry and we find a lot of interactions and targets for treatment. So um, this is an exciting area of research that we do. And I think that the most important part of it that you'll uh, hopefully see this year is to better understand in, on the molecular level what is associated with chronic itch and then enable us to better uh, uh, treat these patients um, across multiple skin diseases. And I can tell you that there are some common denominators for all types of chronic itch. 
one of the studies that we published out of it is uh, in mice, uh, my colleague Zuvu uh, Cheng from WashU found way back in 2007 that mice uh, that um, I have a um, lack of GRPR, it's a gastrin-releasing peptide receptor in the spinal cord, were not able to scratch an itch. Um, so um, the question was, is it valid in uh, humans? And it's clearly difficult to do spinal cord uh, biopsies in human. But this model showed in uh, monkeys that really uh, there is a significant overexpression of this receptor in the itchy monkeys. We, were bl we blinded ourselves. So I had a, um, a grad student who did the, the staining and someone else was following for B-weekly these monkeys. So we have a lot of data that uh, is very valid. This was published in JID way back. Uh, three years ago, but clearly there is a lot of uh, overexpression of this uh, peptide uh, in chronic itchy uh, monkey. So it is another target possibly for treatment of itch in humans. So the question now is, let's be practical. These are still research uh, related, but uh, what do we treat now uh, chronic itch? So for decades we were using antihistamines, but uh, as you well know, for the majority of cases of uh, a chronic itch, they don't work, except causing the patient to be too drowsy to notice that they're itchy. So um, I, I think that at the moment, we treat these patients in a rather crude fashion, uh, but we treat them with uh, symptom-modifying drugs, and we take these nerves that are noisy, and we try to dampen that noise and reduce that. So. Um, we try to put them to sleep, and in terms of treatments topically, the treatments that I'll present to you, most of them you're familiar with. Um, some I hopefully will introduce so you could try, and all of them are uh, you're able to uh, use in the market. One is Promoxin, it's a local anesthetic. Another one that we have uh, started using after we tested it, and we found that this drug, uh, um, it's an OTC strontium 4%. Uh, then capsaicin can induce itch too, so remember there are different concentrations. There's now a capsaicin patch that is given for neuropathic itch. Very difficult to get it here in the U.S., but in Europe my colleagues use that. Menfol, uh, this has been for centuries. Remember that there are patients, around 30% we've uh, reported that, that about 30% of patients will tell you that cooling worsens their itch. If that's the case, don't use menfol because it aggravates their itch. 